Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome to my 2024 room tour. Today I want to show you around my TV and gaming setup, including everything I've added to it over the last year. Now I've tried to create a space that I can use to sit back and chill, watch a movie and do some gaming. So today I'm going to cover it all, which I'm hoping might even give you some inspiration for your own setup, or at least answer those questions that I get asked a lot. Either way, I've linked to everything below if you want to check it out, along with any discount codes that I might have found. Okay, so before we jump into the tour, let me show you what it looked like about a year ago when I first moved in. So the previous owners actually used this space as a dining room. So it had orange wooden floors, lights on the walls, cream paint, and even a chandelier. And then this is what it looks like today. I know you've probably seen this room quite a lot on the channel or over on my Instagram account, but there will definitely be things in here that you've not seen before. And as for the size, well, this room measures 12 feet by 23 feet, just to give you an idea of the space. Okay, so let's start with the TV. So I'm using the 77 inch LG G3 OLED and it is by far the best TV that I've ever owned or used in the setup. It's bright, it's vibrant and as it's an OLED, we get those nice inky black levels as well as those awesome viewing angles. On top of that, it works perfectly well on the PS5 and the Xbox Series X as it's got 4K, 120 FPS and VRR support. And this is one cool feature that I always mention in the LG TV reviews and that's the game optimizer mode. So you can see what the games are running at and if VRR is enabled. Now I've had a few different sizes in here over the last year, including a 55, 65 and 75 inch TV. But personally, I feel the 77 inch is the perfect size, especially as I sit around 10 feet from the screen. And I'll tell you what, the camera really doesn't do this justice, just how big the TV is, but it's incredibly immersive to watch. So as I also use this setup for all of the TV reviews and unboxings on the channel, it means I don't always have the same TV sitting here. But this one is my main TV. This is one that I always come back to and put back on the wall. But there is one thing to know about the G-Series TVs, and that is that they're supposed to be flush to the wall. And that's to give it that nice gallery photo frame finish. But you'll notice that mine isn't, and there is a reason for that. So as I swap out the TVs quite often, I couldn't use LG's wall mount as it would only work with the G3. So instead, I went for this generic one from Envision. Now the advantage of this bracket is it tilts, it pivots, so I can position it however I'd like. Or I can pull it out to swap the cables. Now this one is rated at something like 40 to 50 kilos, so it will hold pretty much any TV that I want to use. Also, by having it off the wall very slightly means the LEDs that I have behind the TV can shine giving us this awesome ambient glow at night. And talking of the LEDs, well I'm using a set of Govies LED strips behind it. This means during the day I can have them set to white or a nice warm glow, then at night I'll often have it set to this RGB vibe. And if you've ever seen any of my late night posts or stories, you would have seen this is what it normally looks like at night. So the LED kit that I'm using to create this vibe is Govi's AI sync box. And this actually syncs the image on screen to the LEDs behind it. It's a bit like how the Philips ambient TVs work. Now, the only issue with this box is it is limited to 4K60. So that means it does limit both the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. And it's for that reason, I actually only use this for the static colors now rather than HDMI. But I have read that they are working on an 8K version that is coming later this year. So as soon as that drops, I will replace the box with one of those. Okay, so out of everything that I'm going to show you today, this is the one piece of furniture that's been with me in every TV setup video or post that I've shown. In fact, I've had this since before I created my YouTube or Instagram accounts. Basically, back in 2015, I couldn't find a TV unit that I liked. So after a year of searching, I just drew exactly what I wanted. Then I found a local joiner to build it for me before painting it. And even today, nine years later, I still haven't found a unit that I would replace this with. It could do with a fresh coat of paint and a tidy up, but otherwise I'm still really happy with this. Okay, then on the top shelf, we have these wooden PlayStation icons from Geek Made Designs. I actually originally had the plastic LED icons on here, which you can get from Amazon, but I reached out to them and asked if they could make a walnut version instead. And well, this is what they came up with, which they do sell on their website from time to time. So if you were interested in these, it's probably worth checking out their website. And in the middle here, we've got a center channel speaker for my audio setup, which I will come back to in a few minutes. But on the right side, we have the PlayStation 5. Now for me, the PS5 is used for like 80 to 90% of my gaming. And it's mostly done from this setup, as it's where I can sit back and chill and fire up those story-driven games. Like over the last week, I've been smashing out Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and it looks awesome. Now, of course, this game is limited to 60 FPS, but for those games that do run at 120 FPS, it looks so smooth on the OLED. And you might have noticed already, but these are not the standard console covers. Now, I'll be honest, I do swap these covers out way too often. So by the time you watch this, there's a good chance I've swapped them again. But these are D-Brand's retro grey plates. Now, I might swap them out to the new sterling silver ones, though, as they are now my new favourites. 
but the reason I like the D-brand ones is they have these rounded corners and are a little bit smaller, although they do have these vents on the side. And talking of ventilation, I know I get a lot of comments saying the PS5 needs space to breathe, but there's a lot more space back here than it first looks. And honestly, it doesn't get hot and it has been here since day one. Okay, so let me show you what's inside the unit. So across the top, we have some of my Xbox and PS5 controllers. There's the 20th anniversary controller for Xbox, which is probably one of my favourites. And we have a few DualSense controllers in here as well. I'm not sure how many I have now, but if they're not in this cupboard, they're in my games room on the shelves. Then next to those controllers, we have my physical game collection. Now, I do buy most of my games digitally, so my physical collection isn't really that big. But we have got some recent ones, including Persona 3 Reload, Mortal Kombat 1, Tekken 8, and of course, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. This is the game that I'm putting all of my time into at the moment from this setup. Now, I do like the idea of owning physical games, but I also like the benefits of digital games, like being able to swap between games and consoles without having to worry about swapping the discs. Do you know what I mean? And out of interest, what do you prefer, physical or digital games? And then on the bottom shelf, it's not quite as tidy as the top one, but there's my Nintendo Switch OLED, which is docked for playing on the TV. Although most of the time, this is used in handheld mode. I've got a selection of games I play on it too, with the most recent one being Mario vs Donkey Kong, and this is a lot of fun to play. And then this is the AVR, or the amplifier that I'm using to power the speakers in my room. It's called the Onkyo NR686, which I've had since about 2019. Now it technically has enough power to easily power the big speakers that I'm using, but it's limited on the visual side of things. And that's because it doesn't support HDMI 2.1. It's fine for sending audio via eARC, but it just means I cannot plug my PS5 or Xbox directly into the amp. And that's because if I did, I would lose the full capability of 4K at 120fps. Okay, then inside this little door, I've got even more controllers, but this is where I actually charge them. So I've got two official charging docks from Sony, which I use to have four controllers on charge. This means no matter what, I've always got four controllers good to go with a 100% charge, and it keeps them out of the way in this little cupboard. As for the speakers, well, I'm currently using the Monitor Audio Bronze range in the 5.1 setup, and these kick out some serious sound. Either side of the TV, I've got the Bronze 500 floor standing speakers in black, which are massive. And just like with the TV, it's hard to demonstrate just how big they are. Now, when I first moved in, I originally had some bookshelf speakers on mission stands, so this felt like a big jump up at the time. But now I am really pleased I went for these, and I think they suit the setup quite well. And it's not like I needed a sub, but I do have the matching bronze W10 sub next to that as well. I actually only have this set to about 50% volume as it literally shakes the room. Now, all of these speakers do come with covers, but I think they look so much better without, so I did remove them all. Although, on the back wall behind the sofa, I am using these bronze FX speakers, and I did decide to keep the covers on. And these are placed just above ear level for that surround sound experience. But yeah, on a night, I'll sit back, crank up the sound for a movie or gaming session, and it's awesome in here. And you might have noticed this already, but there are almost no cables or wires on show. And that's because I've managed to hide them all in the setup using magic. No, seriously though, I spend far too long trying to hide every cable or wire that you hopefully cannot see them. So firstly, behind the TV when I had this wall bracket installed, I also had the cables hidden inside the wall. So there's a port at the top here and one at the bottom. And this means all of my HDMI cables and the network cable go from the unit underneath to the TV. I also had a power socket installed back here as well, so it means when I unplug and swap out the TVs, I can easily remove it without worrying about cutting the power lead or trying to feed it through the wall. And the same goes for all other cables in the room. Behind the speakers, where well, those are clipped into place or hidden under the carpet, and even under this little table with the lamp on, the best I could do was clip this lead underneath. Basically, I use these plastic clips everywhere I see a loose wire. And if there was one thing that you could take away from this entire video today, just tuck those wires out of sight. It makes such a huge difference to the overall look of your setup. In fact, I made an entire video just on cable management if you want to check that out next. And let me show you the other side of the room. So over here in the corner, we have these rustic industrial looking shelves. And this is where I store random accessories and merch that I've bought. So on the top shelf, I've got the Horizon Lego statue, which is pretty cool. And there are some pictures and candles on here as well. I've also got some more of these wooden icons from Geek Made Designs, but this time for Xbox. And then next to that is a controller stand also from Geek Made Designs. Now I've actually got a few of these stands around the house, and I think these look super clean and it's a cool way of displaying your controllers. And then on the bottom shelf we have the Xbox Series X. Now this isn't featured much on the setup and that's because it's kind of hidden away over here. It's also wrapped in one of the new console covers from Xbox, the Starfield one. And next to that, we have a charging dock from PowerA, and this has a couple of controllers on ready to go, including the Starfield one. 
And if you wondered how the Xbox Series X is connected to the TV from all the way over here, well, I put a 5 meter HDMI 2.1 cable under the carpet, up through the wall and into the TV. This still gets me the full of 4K and 120Hz support, and it keeps it looking nice and neat by sitting over here. Okay, let me show you some of the other items in the room, things that I've got on the walls and so on. So over here next to the TV, I've installed some of these walnut wooden panels. I think they add some warmth to the corner and they help with acoustics with the felt backing. And in front of that is a massive one meter snake plant, which I've potted in a 30 centimeter pot. I've got a smaller one to the right of the TV as well. In fact, I've got an obsession with these as they are everywhere in the house. Literally all of my setups now have one of these plants. Then back to this corner. You might have seen this already, but I picked up a few of these frames from Frame a Game. I went for the Spider-Man 2 and the GTA Vice City. And what's cool about these frames is you can swap out the disc and the case for anything you'd like. So right now it has Spider-Man 2 in, but as I'm currently playing Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, I could pop in the Steelbook with the disc once I finished. Now I think this is a really cool way to display your games or Steelbooks that you really like. And if you did want to buy one of these for yourself, well I've put a 10% discount code below. Now this isn't featured much on the channel, but I love it, and that's the fireplace. And this gets used a lot during the winter, and there's something awesome about hearing the logs pop in and crackle in on a night when you're gaming or watching a movie. And what I like about this fireplace is it's double-sided, so it can be seen from both the family room and the kitchen area, as well as the living room. So it was actually a really nice focal point in both rooms. And then in terms of access to the living room, well, it's got two sets of doors. One from over here, which is the main one that we use from the kitchen area. And the other one is what goes from the original living room that I now use as my games room. I have shown this setup before, but at some point I will do a full room tour. Oh, and a question I get asked a lot is what is the color of my walls? Well, it's called silver gray and it's from Next. It's quite blue and cold, but it keeps the room looking fresh and clean for photos and videos. Furniture wise, I've got this big chunky coffee table in the middle of the room. And this gets some interesting comments. Most of the time it sits here with controllers and games thrown down, and of course those PlayStation coasters with a fresh glass of Yorkshire water. And as for the sofa, well I've got two here. I've got a four-seater and a two-seater in grey. They are called the Ashford and have a kind of modern look with some traditional features like the arms and the feet. And behind this sofa is the space in front of the shelves. Now this space would usually be empty, however at Christmas we bought our son one of these four-foot snooker tables, and it's actually lived here ever since. And you know what, we literally use this every single day, and it's just a bit of fun for the family to mess around with. And as for the carpet, as I know at least one person will ask, I went for this extra thick carpet called the Knightsbridge Supreme, and that's in oyster grey with a 10mm underlay. So it's incredibly soft and it means it keeps the room warmer in winter and it feels cosy as well. Oh, and then next to the sofas, we have two of these walnut side tables. One I use for keeping my TV remotes on and the odd controller, and the other one is used for this table lamp. Okay, let's talk about the lighting, as this is a big one for me. Fortunately, we've got windows either side of the room, so natural light isn't really an issue for most of the time. But I do still like to be able to control how much light I get, especially for those darker days where I might need to take photos or videos, and then at night for that pure gaming vibe. So in this corner, I'm using the Govi floor lamp, and I like this because when it's off, you almost wouldn't know it was even there. And then when it's on, it creates this nice glow. Same goes for the LEDs behind the TV. Most of the time they are completely off, but at night I will have them on and we'll have them set to a theme like this. We've also got a Govi glide light in the corner next to the shelves, and this is here just to brighten up the corner of the room. As for the other lamps in the room, these are just normal fittings, but I've gone ahead and added some Lifex bulbs to them. This means during the day, I'd usually have them set to a warm white color theme. That just brightens up the room to make it look more natural. And then at night I could throw on that RGB style, sit back and enjoy that proper gaming vibe. And the same goes for the ceiling lights. I bought one of these off Amazon and had them installed last year. And it means I can install three different LifeX bulbs to point them wherever I'd like. And again, these can be set to any color theme as well. So during the day, I'll have them set to white just to help with the photos. But at night, if I want to go full on RGB, I can have these on as well. And I can tell you now, using different lighting can completely transform your room. And then this is what the room looks like most days. Now this will sound cheesy as hell, but it's kind of become everything that I wanted and hoped for in a room. It's somewhere I can sit back and chill with the family, stick a movie on at night, or slouch on the sofa and game all day. So yeah, on the whole, I am really happy with this room. Now normally, I would list loads of items or pieces of tech that I want to add to it next, but to be honest, there's not a lot I would change. Sure, I want to add some more artwork to the walls, but until I find something, it's just going to stay as it is. But let me ask you, is there anything that you would change or add? Now drop a nice 2024 room tour in the comments, and I'll give you a thumbs up for staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out my top 10 PS5 tips video next, as that covers new tips and tricks to get the most out of your PlayStation 5 in 2024. Well, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and follow me everywhere. Until next time.